Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the M3 Market Update. My name is Melody Wright, and I do this show to give you context around the information we're receiving with respect to the housing and resi the residential and commercial real estate markets. Um, the best laid plans always uh, get messed up the most. I'm just going to say it that way. Uh, but I think some of you may know I am. I live in East Tennessee in an area that was heavily impacted by Hurricane Helene. And so for the last couple of weeks, have just been dealing with that, um, including the fallout, um, a lot of destruction around here in this area. I'm 59 miles west of Asheville. I'm 10 miles away from Unicoi County where 50 people were rescued off the top of a hospital and six folks lost their lives in a plastic factory, uh, very close to many other devastated areas, dozens and dozens of small communities, some of which were kind of wiped away off the face of the map. And, you know, the response, this is a very large area. Six states have been impacted um, and right now, we don't have the same response that um, I saw, for instance, in Katrina. So I've been dealing with a lot of that. Uh, I had followers actually contact me and want my help in distributing aid. And so that's been the focus. So my apologies for not being here to give you uh, a regular update. Uh, but today, I wanted to talk about a couple of things that are going to be very impactful uh, from Helene and from Milton, as you guys know, there's a storm headed down to um, this you know, around the Tampa, Sarasota area. That storm is huge already. We're hearing about tornadoes in Fort Myers and things like that. So this is a massive storm. I hope that everyone uh, in its path will stay safe. I have a newfound perspective uh, after being through this and seeing the destruction, just absolute destruction uh, in these communities, I've been driving around, talking to these local folks, trying to figure out who's in need. And I just, it's its hard to describe. Uh, and roads are gone. Homes are gone off their foundation, floated away. Uh, you know, I told someone else, when you look at a road, it was like a thousand jackhammers at once kind of destroyed the road. So I don't want to make this show completely about this, uh, that uh, I'll be talking about it on other shows in terms if you're interested in what you can do. I'll also put some information in the show notes. Um, but I want to talk about the economic impact. And so we talk about the housing market here and uh, we talk about short-term rental or Airbnbs or Vacasas. And all of these areas that have been impacted, especially in the Carolinas, this is a very high tourist area. This, in, in fact, October is one of its busiest seasons. Uh, the Blue Ridge Parkway is one of the most traveled roads in the country. And what you had near Asheville, and I live right here on the North Carolina-Tennessee border, is you just had almost full communities of a lot of these Airbnbs because this is such a gorgeous area. You can ski, you can hike. Um, you know, the waterfalls, this, the mountain trails. And so year round, we typically get visitors here. And so, for instance, in Asheville, December of last year, we had 2,910 short-term rentals. And that doesn't include Blowing Rock and, 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 and Banner Elk and all these other little communities that were impacted. And so I want everybody to kind of think about this because we know that only 4% of Americans have flood insurance. And if they don't have both flood and wind, in many of these cases, um, they're not going to be insured. And so this is going to be a total loss. And I guarantee you that a lot of these Airbnb operators did not get the right per policies, like a commercial policy. Additionally, uh, they are probably not owner-occupied, even though that's what they said on their application. That's going to cause them trouble uh, with insurance as well. And so if you can imagine just the loss of um, revenue and income, 3000 in Asheville alone, you talk about Tampa, Tampa had 6,127 in December of last year. Uh, Sarasota proper had 7,626 short-term rentals. So I want everyone to kind of think about this. Also think about you know, the impact, if you were thinking you were going to be getting that income and that house disappears overnight, it's not even that you have to maybe wake up and still pay your mortgage. 
but you're not even getting your revenue income. And six states were impacted. I will try to do a much better list of how many short-term rentals got hit with these storms. But a lot of these were tourist areas. And a lot of them were not owned by folks that live there. A lot of them were owned by people from California and other areas. And what we had already started to see, as you guys know, and I was talking about, is that you know many people thought we would top inventory. Uh, seasonally, this is when uh, you're support, supposed to start seeing inventory decrease. That hasn't happened. In fact, month over month from an aggregate perspective, inventory has increased 3.48%. And I think that has to do with, you know, a couple of things, short-term rentals that aren't cash flowing, long-term rentals that aren't cash flowing, as well as, um, you know, layoffs. Uh, you're seeing so like day in and day out, just layoffs, layoffs, layoffs hitting. I know we got that big jobs report and everybody's was excited, but there's so many reasons why we can't take that for the reality of what's ha happening out there. And I would argue that we'll we be seeing all this inventory if the job market was as rosy as everybody talks about. You guys know I look at um, some really deep schedules in the HUD loan performance report, and you can see there that unemployment is absolutely increasing as a reason for default. Now, I wanna stop for a minute and I did a tweet on X Twitter where I talk about what's going to happen to these mortgage companies. And I said, they are about to enter uh, hell in a way that they are not prepared for. And for those of you that follow this channel, I think you know that I've told you that a lot of these big non-bank folks that are, are, that are servicing right now, they didn't ride out the crisis the same way as, say, uh, the big uh, originators and servicers during the GFC. A lot of those either were banks or like my company went away or became smaller, uh, smaller companies. And so many of your largest players like Mr. Cooper, Rocket, they have not been through a cycle like this with government product. And what you're about to see is uh, I can tell you with the, the destruction, the super prime are always the first to walk away the first to strategically default um, because in many ways it's, it, it, they can say it's no skin off my nose. Um, they're so liquid that they can, some of them, some of them, the super prime, but then also they can just walk away, but then there's the super prime that aren't liquid and they're only super prime because of their leverage that just becomes, um, you know, an imploding. It's kind of like when you pull the, the little uh, thing out of the Jenga and it just, explodes. Um, that's going to be our folks that are over leveraged who can't get, um, you know, that cash flow. And then you're just regular mom and pop. They are going to be in a significantly, um, you know, uh, this will have huge impacts on their finances because let's say even if they don't lose the whole home, let's say even they were insured, um, there's just going to be repairs and things that weren't covered. And then again, loss of revenue. So uh, why does this matter to the non-banks? What happens when people stop paying their mortgages? And a lot of times what will happen is you'll get a FEMA hole will be put, put on any of these uh, mortgages that have, uh, you know, that are in an impact zone. Well, the servicers have to advance out liquidity. They have to advance out that po those payments to the trust. Um, and so therefore they are advancing out a lot of money in a time when they are not making a ton of money. And now we've seen refinances tick up, but I've showed you guys uh, not so much historically. And now with rates actually higher again, um, and you guys know I've talked to you a lot about this, <laughs> Uh, that this was a possibility, but this is not what anyone in the industry has been telling anyone for a long time. And so rates are up again and all the enthusi enthusiasm and excitement about those lower rates and that refi boom that was going to happen has already started to dissipate as at mortgage applications were down last week. And so we're about to be in an environment where you've got inventory that's just been wiped off the map. Um, you've got economic distress, and then you've also seen increases in inventory and, and increases in, in price reductions. Uh, Zellman put out her preliminary survey, and uh, the typical average for price 
decreases or cuts in September is 10%. The preliminary results show 20% are doing price cuts. And so we are about to see, um, and this disaster for those that are desperate, they're going to start selling uh, as quickly as they can because the other thing that we know is coming down the pike is increased insurance again um, because a lot of these uh, insurers will simply not be able to afford the amount of damage we're about to see. They lost a lot of their uh, reinsurance game, the way they're able to make money, even when there are great losses. And so I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see some insurers go completely bankrupt, which is also going to be a hit uh, to those consumers if they can't get those funds. And, and so there's a lot going on right now, but these two natural disasters actually are going to just wage war on our economy. And it's going to be very difficult um, for these non-banks to weather this storm at a time when origination is not uh, where it needs to be. And then you have to advance all this liquidity. And so, you know, uh, these the non-banks do not have deposits and they are at the mercy of their loan facilities are these big loans that they get with the banks. Um, some of them are syndicated. And so as soon as though you have to keep advancing the fun out, funds out, then what happens? You have to pledge more assets. When you have to pledge more assets, they are not available to deploy out in the markets to make money. And this just becomes a, a cycle that you can't get out of. And I've lived that cycle and you start selling assets, selling assets, selling assets, um, and then you start to trigger covenants. And so just this is about to become a real liquidity nightmare for the non-banks. I know a lot of people like to talk about the, their stock. Listen, the entire stock market is completely disconnected with uh, the reality on the ground, but there is a point where no one can deny what's happening. And with these two storms, the servicers are going to be completely overwhelmed uh, with loss with people who are going to stop paying. Um, and that's going to be a huge burn on their liquidity. So these were a couple of things I wanted you guys to be thinking about from a housing market perspective. I mean, sales will likely be down next month um, just from the fact that many sales couldn't close that last week uh, in these areas that were impacted. We're definitely going to see that. But you're also going to see demand impacted because, you know, I think once the message gets out there, so everybody thought that Asheville was a climate haven, that, yeah, I got some rain, a uh, little bit of flooding, but, you know, this was a safe area. Uh, that's and so a lot of people invested in Airbnbs there and, and all over this area. And I think this is going to be a wake up call to anyone who is currently uh, an investor in short term or long term rental, as well as who wants to be one, uh, because the increases in insurance, property tax, the cost of home ownership, as well as the risk uh, to loss is I think this isn't going to be as attractive to many after they start hearing these stories in mainstream media. And of course, it'll probably take two to three weeks before we'll start to see those stories. But this, these two storms are going to have a massive impact on the housing market and not in a good way. And so I, and I understand people think that, that a lot of people still believe the inventory shortage, there's not an inventory shortage. It's mismatched. It's mispriced. And, and, you know, folks are holding it when, like, you don't need 15,000 hotels in Austin, Texas. And you can look at the prices there. And you and Austin is not alone. A lot of people try to say it's just Austin. It's just Florida. No, this happened everywhere. Um, my buddy R.E. Watchman has done an amazing video looking at how uh, people um, took the PPP loan and then immediately went around, went and bought a second home. And so there is so much second home ownership. I, you know, my fir the first point of my thesis when I started writing about this in January 2023, there are 15 million vacant properties already in this country and we have declining demographics. Okay. So the math isn't mathing as, uh, 
uh, the kids like to say. So um, these are some things I just want everybody to be thinking about uh, when it comes to the housing market. If you're a current investor, if you are looking to become a homeowner, um, you know, this, this is truly, these events are going to change things, but they're, they're going to make it, it, we will follow where we were going, which is, this is a seasonal time that we're going to see price declines. We're seeing um, dem demands just simply not there. And we're seeing increased inventory and the builders uh, themselves, you know, have a ton of inventory. And so already we had the winds at our back for price declines. These two storms um, are going to accelerate that. And I know people will be like, well, you have all this housing destroyed. Guys, most of this housing was not prime. A lot. I don't want to say most. A lot of it is not primary residence housing in many of these locations. And so this, I don't believe that this is going to have an impact to inventory. It's more going to have an impact to appetite for owning investment properties more than anything else. And the insurance nightmare is um, that, you know, this is, it's going to be something we'll pay close, close attention to. So anyway, um, it's been a crazy two weeks. I know a lot of you were concerned and reached out and I am so grateful for all the the help, the assistance, the 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 kind words, the prayers. Um, you know, when all said and done, guys, I don't care what they're telling you in the media. I've been around to all these communities. The loss of life will probably be greater than Katrina. And and it, there will be years and years of rebuilding. And what's very concerning to me right now is there doesn't seem to be anybody talking about how that's going to happen. Everybody's too busy fighting politically. So um, thank you for the thoughts and prayers. I will have, you know, our more regular updates on what's going on. Um, I hope to have an inventory update very quickly in anticipation of the sales cycle um, updates that we'll get with new home sales and existing home sales in the next couple of weeks. So uh, things are are getting a little better here, but there's still a lot to do. And, and I'm organizing a lot of uh, these relief efforts as well. But thank you so much as always. Um, I hope all of you are staying safe out there. Please, my prayers to everyone who has been impacted by these weather events, these economic events, uh, you know, losing your job. This is a very tough time. And what we have to remember is that we are we are stronger together and that truly what I hope all of us here can feel is that there is community. And, you know, the fact is that everyone wants us to think that, you know, we hate each other. That's just simply not true. And I hope you actually I'll put a link to my sub stack where I talk. It's a free is completely free. Just about my personal experience what happened, but more importantly, the community response. If we no longer feel that we can turn to the government for help, then our community and neighbors are the people that we are going to have to rely on. And that has been the biggest uh, message to me. So as always, you can find me on X Twitter at M3 underscore Melody, M-E-L-O-D-Y, -E M3 Melody Substack, and here um, on YouTube. So I hope everyone stays safe. My prayers are with all of you. Thank you so much for your support, and I will see you again very soon.